Hello, my name is Alexander Grishin, and today I would like to tell you about uh, our recent paper, Controlling Overestimation Bias with Truncated Mixture of Continuous Distributional Quantile Critics. Uh, this paper is written by me and my exceptional colleagues, Arseniy Kuznetsov, Pavel Shvetchikov, and Dmitry Vetov. One of the main problems of reinforcement learning is overestimation bias. Uh, it arises when agent tries to approximate its own future returns and then maximize this approximation over actions. Since this approximation is always imperfect, uh, it, uh, this maximization inevitably leads to overestimation, to overestimation uh, of um, agent overestimates its own performance. Uh, and this overestimation, this error, propagates through time, through temporal different, through, through temporal difference learning, and um, it degrades severely the performance. Motivated by this problem, we propose a novel method, truncated quantile critics, or TQC. TQC combines three main elements. The first one is distributional critics. Instead of single value, our critics output the whole distribution tries our critics try to approximate the whole distribution of returns second element is the assembling of critics uh, which is uh, which promotes the stability and the last but the main in fact actually the main part is truncating the mixture of distribution uh, we truncate the right tail of the mixture to alleviate the overestimation bias This structure, this, um, these elements, leads to several new and interesting properties of our method. The first one is that we incorporate stochasticity of returns in the, into the process of overestimation control. Um, it is important because uh, this exact stochasticity of returns is the root of the overestimation bias, is the root of the problem. And our method is the first uh, which uses this root, this, uh, this root to control the overestimation. The second property is that our method provides fine-grained level of control. Uh, by varying hyperparameters, we can choose the exact level of overestimation control that we need. The third property is that we decouple the overestimation control, the process of overestimation control, and the process of assembling. So we independently, we can independently vary the level of overestimation compensation and the number of critics. We benchmarked our method TQC on the Majoko locomotion suite and compared our method to the previous state of the art, namely soft actor critic, orange, twin delayed DPG, green, and truly proximal policy optimization, blue. Our method outperforms them all by a significant margin from 20 to 30%. Now I want to show you how does this performance increase looks like in practice, in environment. So we compared soft actor critic, SAG previous state of the art, and orange and our method TQC red. So the goal here is to fast, uh, to fast as, fa as fast uh, to run, sorry, run as fast as possible and uh, under some fixed amount of interaction of data. And uh, now it is, it is clear that uh, 20 to 30% increase in performance translate to almost twice as fast agents. Now let's uh, dig into more details of our method. Let's start with some with some notations. Uh, we have uh, the usual interplay between the agent and environment, which is described by states, actions, and rewards. One of the main goals of agent is to learn, is to find the state action value function, which is the uh, averaged future return. And uh, agent uh, 
tries to approximate it with some parametric approximation q theta. And here's the problem arises. Let's imagine there is some true value function blue line, but we have access only to some noisy samples, blue crosses. Then we try to fit, try to approx try to fit uh, our approximation to these blue crosses. We do it, of course, we do it imperfectly because we have some um, insufficient uh, amount of data. Uh, we have some noise and ends up, it ends up with some distortion that uh, our approximation is not perfect. And then when we try to maximize our approximation, we uh, come up with uh, some overestimation. We often come up with some overestimation with some error. And uh, to, uh, here is a visual intuition. And then I want to um, describe it in from more formal standpoint of view. Uh, essentially, what we have is uh, maximum over the approximation. Let's average it over some all over this zero mean distortion. Using the concavity of the maximum operator, we can apply the Jensen inequality and uh, the averaged distortion vanishes and uh, we end up with the maximum over the true Q value function. And now it is clear that uh, the predicted, the predicted uh, maximum is greater, is always greater than the true value. In practice, uh, we don't we don't have the maximum, but uh, we have the policy which tries to maximize our approximated value function, and uh, this in the policy exploits any any spontaneous any erroneous uh, overestimates overestimations, and uh, uh, during the temporal difference learning, this error this overestimation is propagated through time. And even some positive feedback loop may occur. So, um, how do we handle this? Let's start with uh, the existing methods, namely soft accuracy critic. Uh, let's focus on the soft policy evaluation, on the training of the critics. So, uh, we sample some transition from replay buffer and then plug it in the Bellman equation, uh, regularized with uh, the entropy term. Then this target, this target function uh, is, uh, is used as uh, the regressor. Uh, we try to fit approximation, approximated Q function to this target. In, in TD3, in the second method, uh, they um, present the offer some mechanisms to avoid the overestimation. They introduce two value functions, uh, two independent value functions. And then um, instead of one Q function, they use the minima of these two independent Q functions. Um, intuition behind this is as follows. If uh, some some of these two function uh, spontaneously overestimate. Uh, we do not expect. Usually, we do not expect uh, the same. Uh, the same will happen with the second function. It usually will smooth down this overestimation um, via the minimum operator. This uh, approach has several limitations. The first one is that. This uh, bias control is coarse. It means that, um, for example, uh, using the two Q functions under the minimum operator could be not enough to compensate uh, to compensate the overestimation, but uh, using the three Q functions under the minimum could be uh, too much already. So, uh, and the second problem is uh, that. In some sense, this aggregation, this minimum operator is wasteful because we throw out uh, 
we use only one prediction and throw out the other prediction. Uh, to overcome these limitations, we um, offer the solution TQC. So in TQC, uh, we have the following steps. First of all, we have some uh, S prime and A prime next state and, and, and next action from the play buffer. Then we feed this state and action to our distribution critics uh, and end up with N critics times M atoms predicted by critics. Then we pull all these atoms together, forming some mixture of N times M atoms. Then to alleviate our estimation bias, we, re we, we remove topmost D times N atoms, atoms or D per critic atom, D per critic atoms, and end up with some, uh, with the truncated mixture, which has a lower, lower uh, expected value. After that, we apply the usual discounting and shifting by the reward and the entropy of the policy. Uh, these steps uh, leads to the computation of target distribution. Then uh, we use this target distribution as a regressor to each of the critic networks. We apply quantile regression loss, which is exactly the loss which is used by original quark dequin paper. Uh, in fact, it just moves atoms of each of the network to the positions of the quantiles of target distribution. And uh, after training of each of the uh, critic networks, we um, train policy as we um, optimize it by maximizing the non-truncated non average of all atom of the mixture. Now let's return to the contributions. Again, the first contribution was using the return stochasticity for overestimation control. What does it mean? Mm. Let's imagine that we have two return distributions. The bottom one with the smaller variance and the top one with the higher variance, but uh, they um, have the same mean. So higher, uh, higher, um, top distribution has larger variance and we expect it to introduce higher overestimation bias. Now let's apply the truncation to both distributions. Truncation effectively shifts the mean of each distribution. And uh, now we can see that th this shift uh, directly corresponds to the overestimation compensation. And now we can see that with the increase in uh, expected overestimation bias, we our method increases the level of compensation. So truncation um, accounts uh, perfectly accounts for the overestimation bias, and this uh, connection connection between the variance of the return distribution and the overestimation bias we see at the exciting new avenue for research. The second contribution is that uh, our TQC provides fine-grained bias control. Let's look at uh, different hyperparameters, hyperparameters. X axis is the fraction of dropped quantiles. So with the increase of fraction, the overestimation compensation increases. And uh, while moving along the y axis, the total number of quantiles per network, the resolution of the compensation increases. So uh, effectively, uh, we can move left to the right to increase, to strengthen the compensation. And the discretization of this process depends on the y axis, on the resolution. The third contribution is that our method decouples our estimation control and the um, ensembling process. So now x-axis is the fraction of drop quantiles and 
in which corresponds to the process of overestimation control. And y-axis is the number of networks in ensemble uh, corresponding to the process of ensembling. And here you can see that uh, we can independently vary the uh, number of networks and the, um, the degree of overestimation control. We can vary the ind independently. And uh, last but not least, uh, that um, our method establish a new state of the art on the Manchuk lock motion suite. Um, we were motivated by the overestimation bias, but um, does our method really, uh, really um, fights this overestimation bias? Maybe we still overestimate, uh, or maybe we already underestimate. So we conducted the following experiment. We um, estimated the distribution of the difference between the approximated function and the Monte Carlo estimate of true function. Uh, the x-axis corresponds to the number of dropped quantiles. So x-axis corresponds to the level of to the overestimation level of overestimation compensation. And y-axis represents the distributions of these deltas, distributions of these errors. And we can see that TQC, with the increase of number of dropped quantiles, the distributions, the, the distribution and the averaged value, averaged um, overestimation decreases. Then let's add uh, the returns to this axis. And uh, now we can claim that uh, at the point where the overestimation vanishes, at the point when um, this is the point when the average value is zero, our method achieves the um, highest, the the most, um, the highest return. Let's add the soft actor critic to this plot. So now, uh, the in soft actor critic. A number of critics under the minimum operator controls the level of overestimation. And we can see the um, significant, significant difference between uh, n equals to 1 and n equals 2. Uh, seems like n equals 2 is um, almost, is uh, already too severe overestimation compensation. So let's add some, um, in some sense, intermediate methods. There is uh, the version of SAC with linear combination of minimum and maximum of functions. Uh, and uh, it can be seen as the intermediate values between in uh, n equals 1 and n equals 2. And then add the returns to this plot for the, deep, for the versions of SAC 2. Now we can see that uh, indeed soft actor critic can um, uh, can Compensate can can fight um, can compensate for the overestimation bias, but uh, for some reason it achieves the lower return. So um, the sources of TQC performance lies not on not only in the um, overestimation compensation, but also it seems like from the um, procedure of overestimation correction from the distributional critics or maybe that uh, our method can benefit from larger networks uh, while the SAC can't. So this remains, it, it remains as an open question. Here is, uh, if you want some additional details, here are some useful links. Thank you for attention. Bye.